I hope you're having a wonderful day and welcome to this new Blender tutorial in which we're gonna learn how to make this you're watching right now on the screen, playing a little bit with the geometry nodes and also with our material properties. And without anything else to say, let's just begin with the tutorial. The first thing we have to do is to delete everything we have in our scene and we're going to add right here a cylinder. And before we do anything else, we have to come down here to this little window that opened right here when we added the cylinder. And we're going to click here into vertices and write 6. And now we have a little hexagon going on. What we're going to do with this hexagon before we go into the geometry nodes is press tab in our keyboard to go into the edit mode and then press ctrl R to make a loop cut in our mesh. And we're gonna press left click and move it almost to the top of the object. And now we're going to press ctrl R again and put one right below of the first one we made. And now we're going to press 3 in our keyboard and alt click to select all the ring of faces and in case you get, you get something like this it's because you have to click next to these ver to one of the vertical vertices uh, edges of our of our ring of, of faces in order to select all the ring of faces we're going to the material properties and then add a new material and then a second material right here that we're going to press new again and this one is going to be called light and the second one is going to be called hexagon and we can change the name of the cylinder to hexagon and then click into the light with this ring of faces selected and click assign and now if we open the the, the material preview we can change the color of this space right here and we can see the light color is changing and I'm going to put something like purple right here and then come down to the emission parameter and put also a purple color and now we just put our emission strength into something like 5 let's say just for now later we can change that parameter and we're gonna go into the hexagon change the base color to something dark gray and then make it metallic and we're gonna go to the render view right here and we're gonna add go out of the edit mode and add a light that's it and we're gonna move it above our hexagon and we're gonna scale it a little bit and now we're going to put right here something like 100 and uh, we're gonna change the render engine to cycles and the device to GPU in case you have one so what we're going to do right now is to add a bevel modifier right here and we're gonna make the mount to something smaller like 0 0.05 let's say maybe 0 0.02 and now the next thing we're going to do is to click tab again and go into the edit mode and select all of these faces you have right here again the ring of faces and press alt e to, to open this little menu and extrude faces along normals and now you can make the ring of faces a little bit smaller we can go back to the material properties and click into the hexagon and I'm going to make this material a little bit more rough and maybe play a little bit with the metallic parameter and then we go back to the solid view and now open the geometry nodes for playing with the geometry nodes we are going to remove the hexagon from the viewport and the, re the render and we're gonna press shift a to add a plane right here make sure to be outside of the hexagon we had before outside of the edit mode and now up right here a plane and this plane we're gonna press new and we're gonna make it disappear by unplugging this geometry line we had right here and we're gonna add a mesh line here it is and we're gonna plug this into the group output and now we're going to search for a instances on points right here plug it in and then drag your hexagon you have right here into the scene plug the geometry into the instance that's it and now you can see we have a big pile of hexagons in our scene to fix that we only have to right here in the offset of our mesh line put zero in the z-axis and then in the x-axis put a value that is point eight eight six six 
and there you go. We have these hexagons going, uh, being like if we had applied um, an array modifier, but in the geometry nodes. Press Shift A and add a index node. That basically what does is putting a number into each one of these these hexagons like let's say this one is one two three four five and then we're gonna press shift a again to put a math node and this math node we're gonna plug it right here and we're gonna change this to wrap here it is and this will basically change the values of our hexagons let's right now to zero and one or zero and two i'm not sure i don't remember what what numbers it is using and we're gonna an add another math node plug it into here and then and then change it to greater greater than and we're gonna put right here one so that we select only some of this of these hexagons right here and we're gonna make some space right here move this to the left and then right here a set position node that is going to change the position of our hexagons and we're gonna add a vector math to control that value, the offset value and we're gonna plug it right here and then plug the greater than into the first vector we have and now they moved a little bit but we want to set this into multiply in the y value we're going to put put it like this or you can simply write 1.5 that's it. If you want to make this line bigger, you can just uh, put a higher number in the count that we have right here. And then to make this a grid, not only a line of hexagons, we can move this a little bit to the left and then right here at a instance on points node connected right here. Let's move the group input to another place because we're not going to use it right now. And then duplicate this mesh line with shift V and plug it right here. We have to change the offset of our mesh line and we have to put zero again in the x-axis because that will dele delete the, the movement it was having to the right. And we have to put in the y-axis three and that will make our grid appear. And now all we have to do is come right here after the the second instance in points, the one that is uh, instancing the hexagons we have and add right here a realize instances node right here and now a set position node and plug it right here and now in the offset we're going to put a noise texture we're gonna plug it right here. We don't want that, and that's because we put the realize instances after the instance on points that is instancing our hexagons. That was my bad, so we're going to press Ctrl X right here and then press realize instances again and put it before the one of the hexagons after the one of the second mesh line. And right now we have this kind of displacement going on, but we want to change this to 4D for us to being able to animate it and then add a combine XYZ node and we're gonna plug it right here and we're gonna plug this value into the Z value and now the displacement is going on only on the Z axis in order for us to be able to exaggerate this movement so that we can see the these little edges go, uh, going out of the of the grid because these ones are the ones that are throwing out the little lights what we have to do right here is to put in a map range and plug it right here. And now with this, we can control the values we want this thing to scale from and to. And we're gonna put right here something like one and then set the max to a higher value. And after this, put in a color ramp. Let's search for a color ramp and plug it right here and with this we can control a little bit more the displacement we're having let's just flip color ramp and like that we are getting the displacement and now in the w fi uh, value that is like a time value let's say we're gonna write frame and divide this between 100 maybe maybe a little bit more something like 300 and now we can see 
our hexagons are going up and down with a random and if we see this in the render view we can see how the lights are appearing and disappearing and if you want these movements to be a little bit more uh, not just one hexagon going up and down you can scale this this noise texture to something like 0.3 let's say and now you get some movements that are a little bit more regular than the ones we had before. But now since the, since the size of our noise texture is smaller, we have to change the value we have right here. Let's set it back to something like 100, maybe a little bit smaller even. Let's put 50. And now we can see a little bit more of movement going on. I'm going to put 20 and that's it. And all that's left to do once we've done this big <laughs> node setup, we're going to go back to the viewport and move this light we put at the beginning to preview the material or if you didn't add it, just press Shift A and add a light and area light and put it right here, scale it a little bit and rotate it for it to hit like diagonally our, our hexagons look towards your grid something and press shift a another camera and then view align view and align camera to view right here press n view lock camera to view and we can move our camera to a place we like it and if you want your hexagons to scale differently press n to close this little menu you can always go back into the geometry nodes and play a little bit more with the things you have going on right here. This last node setup that is controlling the set position and you can always change these values so that the movements behave a little differently. And you can also play with these values right here and now all the hexagons are moving. So now we're going back to the layout, turn on the render and set this light power into something really high. Let's say 1000, maybe a little bit more, something like 5000. And now we can see it's already lighting up our scene. Just come right here to the scene properties and select a folder where you want to save it and come back here to the to the render properties and just lower your samples in the in the render to something we're not going to need more than let's say 100 samples because the scene is really simple and maybe if your animation is too long what you can do is just come down here and select the end frame and put something like 120 frames that is going to be around five seconds and once that is finished all you have to do is come back here to render animation and by doing that you can make this beautiful animation that took not as much time as the final result we get i hope you liked the tutorial if you have any doubt you can leave it down here in the comment section as always thank you for watching practice a lot and i hope to see you in the next tutorial